How big do you think the largest largemouth bass currently swimming in Lake of the Ozarks is? I think it's somewhere high tens, probably, you know, 10 and a half, 1075, something like that. This week on the Tackle HD podcast, we've got your late April fishing reports for Lake of the Ozarks, Table Rock Lake, and Truman Lake. Plus a preview of this weekend's big bass bash with Ozarks fishing legend, Marcus Sikora. It's the Tackle HD podcast to start off. Here is your Lake of the Ozarks fishing report. Hey everybody, it's Marcus DeCora here at Lake of the Ozarks, just giving you a, a general fishing report here. It's about the uh, middle of April. Um, kind of some things are changing here. Um, trees are starting to bloom. Dogwoods are full blown. Uh, red buds are coming in. Days are getting longer. Tree frogs are happy. So things are really, really shaping up for uh, for a mass movement to the bank. And, uh, and when I think about that, I think there's like a lot of different things that you can do. I think you know, um, anything from spinner baits to plastics to top water to um, anything really, to be honest with you. And, and, and I guess basically what I would do is I would say there's probably two different phases of fish. There's a phase of fish that are now coming to the bank or already at the bank. And then there's a phase of fish that are yet to come. So they don't even they don't even know that it's daytime kind of sort of deal. The ones that are up there already <clears throat> have been up pretty much all winter long if you've been down here at all there's been a wave of shallow fish all um all winter all spring and those are the ones that are cruising right now i mean you know your top water starting to kick in right now you know you get perfect conditions and you know take a buzz bait and just kind of take off down the bank and some gravel pockets and things like that and and really really what i'm paying attention to is i'm paying attention to those pockets um that's just where they go to lay around and that's where they go to do what uh, mother nature's sending them to do right now. So when you think about those pockets, what I think about is I think about usually um, are they on the flat side or are they on the steep side? And if they're on the steep side, you know, that's where it's going to be more of your pre spawn type stuff. That's where I'm going to slow roll a blade. That's where I'm going to uh, maybe even throw a jerk bait or for you, a rig lovers out there, that's kind of where it's going to be. Um, all on that, uh, on what I would call that steeper side, you know, your jigs, um, things like that, Texas rigs, you know, in that, what I would call four to eight foot of water. Um, on the flat side, or what I would call that gravel transition, that's where you're really gonna, gonna get into a lot of different things. I mean, people, um, I don't, but people do love to throw Carolina rigs and things like that because they are massive fish catchers and they will catch big ones. And that's kind of where that starts. Those little gravel indents and things like that. Um, are definitely going to be in play. And also, too, um, you know, like I said, buzz baits run in those shallow pockets uh, for top water for just explosive pandemonium. Those females are kind of get up and get cruising in the shallow stuff. And then all your soft plastic stuff, you know, all your soft plastic uh, creature baits and things like that, you know, pitched around the boat docks, beaver style baits, pitched around the concrete pillars of the catwalks, things like that. So there's a enormous wave of fish that are in those pockets and what's interesting about it is those fish will actually leave those pockets and kind of get out there uh, for the next wave to come in so we can kind of talk about that um, sometime soon but as far as right now um, you know the lake's got some color it's starting to fill up they're starting to get shallow and uh, and it's an exciting time to fish like at the Ozarks right now more from Marcus Sakura in just a few minutes right now it's Dave McCormick with the latest at Truman Lake well, welcome back. We're going to do this every two weeks. We're going to have a Truman Lake fishing report. Kind of give you my thoughts on how the last couple tournaments have gone on Truman here in the last two weeks. So um, we had a pretty good Joe Bass finish. They had a high school tournament the same day, and man, it was busy. About as busy as I could ever remember seeing Truman. And we ran up the Palm de Terram to get away from the boat traffic uh, and we ended up finding the fish on bluffs. I know that sounds crazy. The water was about 54, 55 degrees still, and they just haven't moved from their wintering spots is what we thought. We actually caught those fish on jigs. Um, we caught them on a football jig with a beaver style trailer, dipped orange. We caught a few, but not many. This is what will start to happen is the little finesse jig. It'll start happening. Um, I don't know, we had 60, 16 plus pounds and I think we came in fifth place or sixth place, something like that. Not a great finish, um, but not a bad finish either. Then uh, then the next weekend we didn't have as good a finish. Lost uh, 
lost lost some key opportunities and we did that on a different different deal that was really it's really been hot on the crankbait i know the stick bait was hot there for a while and even some of the high school teams really caught them good on the stick bait but we tried in that area just last weekend with the stick bait and couldn't get bit but as soon as we picked up a square bill or a flat side with sort of a square bill if you will um, and threw it to the bank, even on the pea, pea gravel points and secondaries, we caught a lot of fish. So they were really biting. The water's starting to warm up and they're starting to pull up. So I tell you, the next thing that's gonna happen is they're gonna get to eating some shad. Right now, I really feel like our fibers were full of uh, pinchers, orange pinchers, which tells me you know, sometimes it's full of the gray goo that's really shad. And uh, the, so they were eating some crawfish, but they're going to get on this. They're going to get on the old spinnerbait. It's going to happen. That old Ozark flash is going to really put them in the boat. It, it's actually getting a few bites already, but just a few more degrees in a right windy day and uh, get to going. So we're going to do this every two weeks. I really thought the palm to tear arm was hot, but boy, was the grand in the lower Tebow. So I'm going to tell you, I think the the dark horse arm is probably the Osage. The water's very dirty, and I hear the red crankbaits are still really getting it done. So there's a possibility if the water will settle, we don't get a whole lot of rain, that that muddy water might just really fire up. Might be able to catch them on a red crankbait, might be able to get in there with a the chatterbait. Give, give, just wasn't right when we tried it. I know uh, Dino and Joe uh, got a good check in Joe Bass and they did it up there. So um, it can be done. I know they did it with a whole lot less bites than we had, but they came out in front of us. So you don't have to catch that many to win. You only have to catch five. So enjoy your time on the water. Take a kid fishing. We'll see you in two weeks. Matt Fielder joins us now with the latest at Table Rock Lake. Hey guys, this is Matt Fielder with MJF Guide Service and Modern Outdoor Tackle. Uh, we're doing the end of April fishing report for Tackle HD. Um, this week, I've been catching a lot, a lot of fish on a 2.8 Kai Tech. Um, it's been my go-to, whether it's out fishing in creeks, in the middle of the creek, or transitioning into those pea gravel with chunk rock based points and just slow rolling this either on the bottom, but it can only be on the bottom if there's not any moss present. Um, if there's moss, they tend to suspend. So you'll have to throw this, you know, count it down five, 10 seconds and then slowly roll it in. Another thing that I've been throwing with the 2.8 Kitech is also on an underspin. So just pair the Kitech up with an underspin and do the same thing. If there's no moss present, I've been slow rolling it on the bottom. If there's moss present, I've been just lifting that thing up, letting it drop five to 10 seconds, and then just slowly reeling it back in. I've been finding these fish in eight to 15 feet, sometimes a little bit further out, depending on the day. There's no rhyme or reason that I've seen. I've fished cloudy days where they were in that eight to 15 foot, and I fished sunny days where they were in that eight to 15 foot, and I've also found them out 20 foot on sunny or cloudy days. So I haven't really found a particular reason why they're there, maybe besides the shad being present in a particular depth. Um, the other thing I've been throwing in those same spots, either in the guts or on those points uh, up shallow is a, is a jerk bait. Right here we've got a 13 fishing loco special. Um, this is a black lavender color and I've been catching a lot of fish on it so that's something that you may want to pick up if you've never tried a loco special jerk bait it's a really good jerk bait and I've been catching a ton of fish on it um, uh, fiddle sticks by tackle HD is also working for me uh, in the table rock shad color um, just kind of been a one-two punch you know this is a little bit more translucent which the table rock shad is a little bit um, it's got more white, a little bit of chartreuse, and a little bit of purple on it. So on cloudier days, I tend to throw that a little bit more than 
in this black lavender color. The rock crawler bite is starting to pick up a little bit too. As we move into the spawning season here, um, with the water temperature between 54 and 56 degrees, th they're starting to really move up. So in this past week, I've seen a lot of fish out deep have now moved shallower and shallower. And we've got a lot of warm weather coming in uh, this week. We've got a lot of rain, but it's not a cold rain. It'll be a more of a warm rain. And that'll drive a lot of these fish. We just had a full moon and it puts them on the bank. Um, I've seen a few beds. I haven't seen a ton locked on, but I've seen a few locked on. So with that being said, we can get out the floating worm now. With the floating worm, you just kind of chuck it up um, along the bank and just kind of slowly reel it back. I mean, it'll, you can do some flicks and the, you know, bass will come out and eat them. Um, so this is going to be key probably going into this week, next week, and for the next few weeks, this floating worm is going to be a huge player. I've also been seeing some fish really concentrating towards docks. Um, so you can throw this floating worm in there. You can even wacky rig this worm. Wacky rigging this floating worm is a really, really good way to catch not only numbers of fish, but big fish because I've seen some big ones up by the docks lately. So you may want to try that going out for the next couple of weeks because they're staging up on those docks, getting ready to just pull up to the bank, spawn, and get back out to the main lake. Another thing that you can do for those dock fish is throw like a little peewee football jig or a pro spider jig. You can just flip it up, a little bit lighter weight so it falls slower so they can eat it on the fall. And sometimes they'll follow that to the bottom and you can get some big, big bites doing that, especially right now. I've been seeing a lot of those fish up by those docks. So that's something to keep in mind. Another thing, this excites a lot of people. I've actually caught a few fish this week on a topwater. This is a Damiki Rambler 120 and caught a couple really nice largemouth this past week in guts of pockets but are shallower pockets and they've pushed the shad into there or the wind has pushed the shad into there and some largemouth are really getting in there and blowing up on these. I'm not saying you're going to get a ton of bites, but I'm starting to see a little bit of a top water bite. So that's really exciting for us going forward. And I hope, uh, I hope you guys can get out there and experience it because it's a fun time of the year to be fishing. Um, if I haven't touched on it before, our lake level is 916.32. Um, we're between 54 and 56 degree water temperature. I see that climbing as we get through this week because we're going to be getting up into the 80s in temperature. So hopefully you guys can get out in the water. It's really starting to heat up and uh, have a good week fishing. Thank you. Today's episode is brought to you in part by our friends at Fitz Fishing Tackle and Supplies. If you're headed to Lake of the Ozarks for the Big Bass Bash or any time this summer, make sure you drop in any one of their three locations. Fitz Fishing Tackle and Supplies, online at fitzfishing.net. Marcus Sikora, welcome to the Tackle <laughs> HD Podcast. Hey, thanks so much, Joe. Happy to be with you, brother. Absolutely. So you are in your office right now uh, down at Lake of the Ozarks where you live, yeah? Oh uh, yeah, Osage Beach. Yep, that's where I live. Um, here, I've lived at the lake for about twenty years now, a little over twenty years. And and uh, man, every day I wake up thinking about uh, driving across that Grand Lays Bridge to work or or wherever I go, and I just think about how uh, how lucky I am to live in a place like this. It's awesome. Was it fishing that moved you down there as a full time resident? Yeah, I, I guess basically in a nutshell, that was probably the precursor. You know, I grew up pretty close to here, Waynesville. My father was in the military and so on and so forth. So Fort Leonard would kind of brought our family there when I was uh, when I was a kid and then uh, always been around here and always fished around here and went to school at Mizzou and everything like that. And uh, like even when I was in school, I was I'd always come to Columbia or to Lake of the Ozarks when I was in Columbia. I'd come to Lake of the Ozarks fishing and I always dreamed about living and making a career at like at the Ozarks and uh, and lo and behold I uh, I worked for State Farm right out of school in the claims department and they had decided to put a brand new what they call scratch agent so no book of business no nothing it's just you 
uh, the sweat of your brow and a phone book and anybody <laughs> who can who can be bear to talk to. Right. And about 20 years ago, I started a, a state farm office here from scratch. So, uh, so wow. it's been a true blessing. Incredible. So uh, going back to 20 years ago, when you first moved down there to today, uh -huh. yeah. how has fishing Lake of the Ozarks changed in that period of time? Wow. You know, that's interesting. Uh, me and my friends kind of chew on this and some days we're for it, some days we're against it. But I think without a doubt, the biggest thing that has changed, well, there's two things, Joe, that have changed. Number one, if it Evidently nobody works because <laughs> it was a big deal because <laughs> it was a big deal. You're like, man, on Wednesday, I'm going to go and I'm going to put into this ramp and I'm going to have the whole lake to myself. Right, right, right. When you go down there now and you're like, I didn't know there was a tournament today. <laughs> right. Where do they get the time? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, you know, but to each their own, right? It is what it is. So, uh, um, but so one thing is I would say, you know, pressure, I guess that boils into the big giant canopy of pressure, mm -hmm. uh, you know, every saturday every sunday now starting next week it's wednesday nighters it's thursday nighters the week after that it's tuesday nighters wednesday nighters thursday nighters friday nighters and then you got a tournament saturday and you got a tournament sunday oh and you got one that comes out of the gravel you got one that comes out of shawnee bend you got two come out of pb2 you got one that come out of robbins and a couple come out of the river so <laughs> it's just pressure right yeah. um is massive and then the other thing that i think over the last 20 years that's changed a tremendous amount is the technology mm -hmm. and i've i've fought this thing and uh and i don't want and, and i'm very tech savvy i mean i'm mm -hmm. you know i'm not like a super whiz kid but i promise you it doesn't take me long to figure something out you know right and, and, and embrace technology for everything that it is i don't i don't fight it and go against the grain but the technology to be able to see the fish with forward facing sonar and to be able to throw with that fish seven, eight, nine, 10, 12, 15 times before you catch it never, never was a deal. And, and so right now that technology piece and that ship set sail, I mean, is whether I'm forward or whether I'm against it, yeah. that ship has set sail. So you better either embrace it um, because there's times I think it doesn't matter, but I think there's times that it absolutely matters and uh and and that's kind of the deal that i see more than anything joe is i um you know as far as that like what i would call the fishery i've seen um i've seen probably in my 20 years of fishing this thing so as much as i do i'd say probably four what i would call phase cycles you know where all of a sudden we got a bunch of five plus pounders and then you know and then then we don't you know and we only got a bunch of three plus pounders so ups and downs of the actual fishery i've probably seen four three maybe four in my and while I'm one cycle I can think of, it was really, really tough, like there for a couple of years, 15 to 17 pounds, won everything. Uh, of course, we're kind of back in the, the, the swing going up where, you know, there's probably been 10 or 15, seven pounders weighed in so far this year, which is, yeah. which is a lot. I mean, you know, for, for us, um, you know, I've caught maybe a dozen seven pounders on this lake, maybe in my life, you know, and uh, maybe a little more, but I mean, not a lot. You know, seven pounders is a real big one. Yeah. And uh, and you're seeing a bunch of them come through. So, um, but having said that, though, one thing about it, Joe, that hasn't changed about this lake is that it's never the same. And and that's, you know, because I think about, you know, sometimes I'm like, well, how do people go and fish the same three lakes all the time? Right. Like right. how, like, is it, is it, you know, I love to eat scrambled eggs, but if I had to eat scrambled eggs every day for breakfast, <laughs> I mean, sooner or later, I'm right. going to get tired of eating scrambled eggs, you know? So, so it's one of those things, but what's interesting about this lake that has never ceased to amaze me in, in what I would call the three decades of really, really fishing this thing is it's never the same. The brush piles that I caught them on last April, mm -hmm. th there's no fish in right now, you know, and, and, and they may be the hottest thing next year, you know, or there might be a section of the lake that's got color. There may be a section of the lake that's clear. There may be a section of the lake whether for some particular reason has got a stronger year class of spawn four years ago. So now there's four pounders everywhere and, uh, <clears throat> and, and you can spread out on this lake. So, so that, that's one thing about this place right here that I think makes it unbelievably special um, without even having to look at the tournament results or fishing reports to see kind of what's going on. It's a big lake. Do you think you've fished all of it? I think I think I fished most of it. No, I mean I all know, but I think I fished most of it. I mean I've spent a lot of time, like in the summertime around here. You know, whenever it's 
June, July, August, um, you know, we don't fish below the 60 mile marker, right? Because you can't, or you can, but you got to get off the water at 10, you know? So, so a lot of times, you know, we spend a lot of time fishing, you know, that 60 to the 90 plus mile marker Mm -hmm. and it's a completely different area and it's a completely different place and it's so cool and so neat. Um, so yeah, I mean, I feel like I've, you know, but then sometimes we take out a Bledsoe Ferry, which is at the base of Truman Dam and we run all the way down to Bagnall. You know, so it's uh-huh. like, so it's like, I, you know, I've just, yeah, I, I feel like I've fished most of it. I feel like I've been in pretty much every cove, uh, around and, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's a neat place, man. It's, it, it is massive, massive, like as far as shoreline goes. So something that, that has been said is that 80% of the fish at any given mm-hmm. time are in 20% of that water. Yes. Do you think that's true or false? No, I, I think I think it's true. I think it's extremely true. But uh, but I think, you know, specifically about Lake of the Ozarks, you know, if we're going to talk about Lake of the Ozarks. I think that um, it's in 20 percent of the water in two out of five different sections of the lake. Right. So, like, sure. let's say you got the upper Osage is one section. Then let's say you got that middle Osage, including the Nyang was is one section. Then let's say you got the glaze is another section. Then let's say you got from the glaze to, uh, you know, the gravel is one section, then the dam is one section, then the gravel itself is one section. So it's Mm -hmm. like, you know, five or six different sections. And what's interesting about it is, especially this time of year, there might be one or two of those sections that are excelling. For some particular reason, um, the way the wind is blown or the way that the sun is laying or the way that the the runoff has impacted it, there's one or two or three sections that will fire that you guys would just be like, man, I can't believe how good it was today. And then guys who weren't in those sections were just like, Oh my God, it was the terriblest, toughest freaking place I've ever been. I can't believe. And I, and and I've been on both sides of that too, by the way, especially this year, you know, I'm just like, man, that was terrible, tough, you know? And then there's 15 stringers over 20 pounds. I'm like, well, evidently wasn't too tough for them. (laughs) So so you'd say 80% of them are in 20%, but that's happening in five or six different sections of the Absolutely. 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 And and what's interesting about that, Joe, so this goes to my anomaly of like what makes this place special. You know, let's, let's take, for instance, the Graboy, you know, the Graboy arm, the mouth of the Graboy is extremely different than the upper end of the Graboy. You know, Indian Creek is a massive, creek up the gravel and it could be on fire because it's got a bunch of color in it and a bunch of like rock transitions and stuff like that it could be on fire joe and the rest of the gravel could be gin clear and you can't catch a cold and so you got anomalies within it too but that's the right. point of like what what fuels my passion about this place and what makes it so diverse and that's why you see guys that cut their teeth around here really do well on the national level because they have to adjust and they have to be able to just go around the corner and trust their instincts. And, and that's what it takes a lot of times to do, to do well here. What was your first job uh, in fishing? I know you, you tournament fish, but uh, have, yeah. you, have you held, held other jobs within the fishing industry? No, no, no. I've, I've, I've always, I've never held a job within the fishing industry. I've always been a state okay. farm agent, but I've always been okay. closely involved with um, helping promote uh, different tackle manufacturers, like some of my first sponsors, like I think of, you know, maybe like, you know, somebody like Chompers or something like that, you know, is is from the very beginning, you know, didn't have anything, didn't, couldn't afford a jig kind of deal. You know what I'm saying? But yet these people are giving me free ones. Thank God, you know, um, but, and for the record, I always did go try and get them unstuck. I never just broke them off and kept going, but, uh, <laughs> but, you know, I've never been involved in the fishing industry and I've never really pursued what I would call the, um, the professional fishing world. And, and, and the re- and the reason is is because um, you know I'm very blessed with my career now and, and and love it and and have a different level of impact with my life on this side of the desk. But that fishing world is it, it's a very to me it's a very dedicated world, right? It's a lot of it's a lot of long days where there's not one particular thing that you say you did that day. It's a lot of it's a lot of being away from home. You know, I have two young children and, and my family is the most important thing that I could ever imagine in this world to me. So, and, and my wife, and I mean this as a true accolade, she, she's not going to stay in a campground, you know what I'm saying? Or it, it better be like a four seasons campground. Or something. <laughs> right, right. 
doesn't want to just be traveling around with you on traveling the around. Yeah, I get traveling it. Yeah. around, chasing the circuit, and and working, you know, tremendously long hours, trade shows, and 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 if you're not catching them, then you're talking, you're having to talk to people about, you know, right. catching them or something. You know right. what I'm saying? You've seen Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, well, with with that being said, um, what what tournaments are you pursuing these days? Just just stuff happening at Lake of the Ozarks. Yeah, no. So, I, so John, I've, I would consider myself um, uh, a regional angler is what okay. I would consider myself. So I, I kind of do like I'm kind of from Kentucky Lake. Of course, it's it's on a downhill swing, but it's coming back. So like Kentucky Lake, like in through Arkansas, Dardanelles and all that stuff and out through Oklahoma's, mm-hmm. um, you know, Grand Lake is uh, is is probably my favorite place right now outside the state of Missouri in the Midwest because it's okay. similar to like the Ozarks. But I just kind of fish those three or four states right there. But most of the time, I'm reeling back a lot of that stuff in that pro am world. You know, my daughter's 14 and my son's 11. You're so busy. it's man, I'm I'm helping coach or I'm you know running kids or I'm doing you know, right. and, and I love it. I wouldn't trade it for anything. As a matter of, of fact, I've, I've noticed it's kind of actually cut back some of my passion for fishing because my passion is being pursued now through their eyes. Um, yeah. You know, so I, I know that's a natural progression, or at least they, I'm told it's the natural progression, but uh, at least it's supposed to be the natural progression. Right? <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but no, it's uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm kind of just a regional guy, but I'm trying to do as much as I can as close to home as I can, because there is so much opportunity here. Sure. Sure. So for 2022, how many tournaments would you? Uh, I'd say, let's say there's 52 weekends. Let's say throw out three for holidays. So that brings us to 49. I'm saying I'm probably 40 weekends, 40 weekends. I'm probably out there, you know, putting an entry fee into something anyways. That's still a lot. That's, that's very active, but I guess it just helps that you're close to home. That's, that's. Yeah. 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 I mean, you know, there's not really, you know, I mean, you're up and at them and gone. And, and like even these summertime tournaments, you know, those are actually the best because you're off the water at one o'clock. You know, baseball game may not start till three o'clock. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah. saying? So yeah, you, you can do both. You can do both. Yeah. yeah. And and you're only, you know, I live literally. Um, I did live three minutes from the ramp. No, I bet I live six minutes from PB2. So, okay. you know, it's not it's not a this strenuous way to get over. Right. It, you know, so it's cool. Uh, in your tournament fishing career, what is your personal best largemouth bass? Uh, in the biggest fish I ever weighed in was an eight pound, eight ounce fish, and I caught it in Table Rock uh, in the month of March in a BFL on a jerk bait, is what it was. And then, um, you know, I've got several what I would call five fish stringers over 25 pounds, either on the individual side or on the team side. Uh-huh. And uh, probably my single biggest accomplishment would be to uh, to have won the All American 2014, which is a which is a grueling grueling task. I, I actually won it um, very easily, I would say, as far as the the amount of resistance I had to try to get there. I made it qualified for the All American. I was, you know, I have some friends, you know, Roger uh, Roger um, Fitzpatrick and Dennis Bear Horse or two household names, you know, around like the Ozarks and, and they've always, you know, kind of traveled around and done that. And I've just kind of looked at them and said, man, that's cool, man. That's cool, man. That's cool. And then I thought I'd do it. And then I went and qualified one year and um, went to my first all American and kind of finished middle of the pack. And I left, you know, really, really bloodthirsty and came back the next year and I won it. And I was like, man, that's awesome. Well, then I've tried to get back there like nine, whatever, 2014. So it's 28 years, but some years I fished multiple events to try to qualify for multiple divisions and I've made the last day in virtually all but a few of them, and I can't get back to the All American. So it's, it's, uh, it's now I want, I, I just want to get back there one more time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> one more. I want to get back there one more time is what I want to do. And then I, and then I'll quit chasing that, that goal at the end of the rainbow, you know? But, uh, but the cool thing is, though, that, uh, that we want it. So, you know, it's oh, better man. than going to 10 of them and not winning, I think. Yeah. You mentioned yeah. a, a few names there. Who are some of the other names in in the world of fishing that have been uh, an influence on your fishing career? Oh gosh, I mean, my team partner, his name is Bill Davenport. I mean, he's never traveled around very much, but he's the guy who kind of really tucked me under his wing, and um, you know, since I was probably fourteen, kind of been hauling me around and taking me fishing. Same with another guy named John Jury. He's a president of a little bass club back home that kind of got me fishing these big lakes. So I always give the most of my credit to them, and then. And then, and then, you know, really, to be honest with you, I, I think, uh, I think a lot of it's peer driven around here. I, I think when you 
think of Lake of the Ozarks and I think you think of the names and the people that are fishing here. I, you know, I don't, I don't care if it's Roger. I don't care if it's Dennis. I don't care if it's Jeremy lawyer. I don't care if it's James Watson, I don't, and Casey Scanlon, you know, the thing about it is, man, I mean, we, we have a true brotherhood here. I mean, it's, it's really, Joe, I've seen this game and it's very cutthroat. You know, you're fishing a public body of water. So, 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 you know, 15 years ago, I always worry about somebody seeing me catch them somewhere because I knew that if they had a better boat number for them in the next day, they were going to race right there and try to beat me to them. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a public lake, you know, and, and now, I mean, for the most part, I mean, there's always a few, but for the most part, somebody sees me catch them. They, they may never fish it ever. You know what I'm saying? And, and they don't talk about, you know, why well, I seen him over there. I seen him over there. And, and afterwards we, we gather around and I mean, it's like a fraternity and, and, and I gotta be honest with you, Bass and Bob is the one that kind of brought that fraternity together. I joke with them all the time, but man, just, you know, we, we give away way, way too much, right. Specifics on how to catch them and what we're doing and this, that, and the other, but in, but in return, it, it has absolutely turned it into a fraternity. I mean, these people are my brothers and they know if they need me, I'm there for them. And, and I promise you, I, that, that I feel the same way about them. You know, if I need to, uh, if I'm broke down on the side of the road or if I, you know, somebody stole all the tackle out of my boat or whatever, you know, man, I, I'm struggling. Give me a bone that I can, you know, I don't want to beat you with it, but give me a bone to get me started. I mean, that's, that's kind of what we do around here, you know, and, and we've had some tremendous people and it's cool. You kind of stand around and you fish with, you know, you fish with uh, Dion Hibden, you know, who's won the classic and he's won the, you know, the, the, the cup. And I mean, all these people that you stand around are, you know, champions in something and many things, to be honest with you. you know, Roger and Dennis been the all American. I don't know how many times and Casey and Watson and Jeremy lawyer continue to hit the ball hard, you know, on the national level. And, and, and then, and then you got all of the young guys coming up, you know, that are, that really, really work hard to be able to excel at the support and, uh, and they are excelling. And to be honest with you, they're doing it the right way. They're, they're doing their own thing they're 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 working hard at it and they're doing the work ethic and and so you know right now to be honest with you it's just a cool place to be you know because you if you can't look around and find a success story at the boat ramp then you don't have your eyes open man i mean it's just <laughs> it's serious these these guys around here are absolute freaking hammers but they are absolute freaking brothers too so it's it's a neat place very cool very cool. Uh, a couple more Ozark specific yeah. questions. If you had to throw, just pick one bait to throw yeah. all four seasons at Lake of the Ozarks, what would you be throwing? Boy, I tell you what, if I, if I only had one, it'd have to be something like a jig. You know, I think it'd be a jig, right? Yeah. Because, because you can throw, uh, you can cover zero foot of water with it, or you can cover 35 foot of water with it. You can make it fall really fast. You can make it fall really slow. You can make it finessey and you can make it bulky. And I think the jig is the, probably the most universal bait out of all of them, you know, quite frankly. And, and I think, uh, if I only had one, it, it'd be a jig. How big do you think the largest largemouth bass currently swimming in Lake of the Ozarks is? I think it's somewhere high tens, probably, you know, 10 and a half, 10, 75, something like that. Yeah. In 1996, I caught the biggest fish I ever caught in Lake of the Ozarks away by nine pound, four ounces. And that day I also netted a 10 pound, six ounce fish. Now I've never seen another 10 pounder. Jack Ux of the guy down here. I think he had a client caught a 10 pounder here. I think two years ago. Um, I've seen a whole lot of people say they caught 10 pounders, but I really think they're sevens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Don't, don't get but, that scale around them, man. They'll, yeah. they'll, they'll, want them, they'll want to crawl out on their story a little bit. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. So, uh, um, but, but I think, I think, you know, I think it's our carrying capacity. I think we got a super strong winner. I mean, hell dude, here we are. Whatever it was April, whatever the 18th, 19th, whatever it is. And it was golly, I about froze to death in the Turkey woods this morning. You yeah. know, and it was cold. Yeah, Jeez. absolutely. So that uh, that's the limiting factor. They've got the forage. They've got the shelter. They've got the consistent spawns. What they don't have is the growing season. Okay. So the big bash event, big mm -hmm. bass bash event is uh, this weekend, April yeah. 23rd and 24th, $100,000 up for grabs to the angler yeah. who brings in the biggest bass. 
Um, yeah. What do you think anglers can expect at that event this year down at Lake of the Ozarks? Um, I think they're going to expect hitting the nail on the head as far as, you know, being able to go out there and catch a tremendous amount of fish and tremendous amount of quality fish too. You know, like, uh, like I was mentioning, I mean, these fish are really kind of pushing in the pockets and, uh, and, you know, when you get in these pockets, I mean, you, you know, you, you could throw a, a, a zoom brush hog out there and, you know, pick out a little bit of overrun out of your reel, engage your reel and have a 720 on it. You know what I'm saying? When you go to pick it back up. I mean, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. Uh, those big ones are coming. The first wave of big ones are coming and um, and they're getting shallow. You know, and if the conditions are right, you know, I think if it's low light, I think something like that. I think that they could go and cover, you know, pick up a buzz bait, you know. You can mm -hmm. grab Watson's buzz bait, you know, that tackle HD buzz and, and freaking just smash their brains in to be honest with you you know you may only get 10 bites but they all the smallest one probably gonna be four pounds you know um you know the swim bait and the glide bait guys i mean these people paying 200 300 500 for a bait and then they're buying a specialized rod they're buying a specialized reel i mean they've got 1500 wrapped up in uh in just equipment and one rod reel and a couple of baits and and uh there's something about those larger baits that the bass just because they don't see it enough um, or maybe the bigger fish target that bigger forage. But I've just seen it way too many times where you can throw at a bigger fish and nothing, 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 nothing. And you pick something up as long as your leg, throw it at them. And it, I mean, just comes rocketing towards it, you know, interesting. And, and it's just one of those things. So those guys are going to, those guys are going to have a heyday. I think uh, this weekend as well. If you were a betting man, where do you think that big fish comes, comes from? Which part of the lake? Boy, that's tough, man. That's so tough. I would bet that it's probably going to come out of the Grand Glaze is what I would get. And, and the reason why I say it's going to come out of the Grand Glaze is because it's got the most, it's got the biggest. In a lot of these tournaments, there's been a lot of seven plus pounders that have been caught and released in that area. I, I think the Grand Glaze, somebody's going to catch one out of the Grand Glaze. And then I think there's uh, a lot of big fish potential um, around the Gravoy you know, that, that area right there. And then there's that anomaly of that upper Osage, you know, the last couple of years we've had so much current and that upper Osage is gotten ne near the pressure. I don't think it has near the amount of fish either, but those fish up there are just absolutely freaking tanks. Hmm. So, so, you know, I think, and that's, what's cool about the lake. Once again, you kind of spread out and you can kind of go do what you want to do. If you want to fish two foot deep, you can go up that Osage and fish two foot deep. You want to go and fish, you know, 20 foot deep, that gravinator is a, great place to do it and if you want to fish somewhere in between that glaze is perfect let's set up for it right now it's got some color in it it'll be good are you fishing in it no they don't let me fish in it i don't yeah. know yeah that, you know i don't agree with that because i like i said i i can't remember the last you know big fish in this deal probably be like a 747 or something like that i mean i i can't remember the last 747 i've weighed in that Oh yeah, I can. I've never weighed in a 747 at Lake the Ozarks. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, but you know, whatever, uh, you know, I'm, I'm still a huge proponent of it and a huge supporter of it. And I love what it does for our economy and I love what it does to see these, uh, see these people, you know, have a lot of fun and, and, and you might have three generations in one boat going fishing. And, and that's really what I'm about more so in my life right now than winning is, is making sure that you see everything through the purity and the lens that, you know, that, that, uh, that we have created for us. So it's, it's one of those things that I, I, I wish them the absolute best. Um, so you are a state farm agent by day, yeah. yes, uh, sir. fisherman, fisherman, when, when you are able to, it sounds like quite a bit. Is there, is there any overlap one benefiting? The oh other? yeah. Oh yeah. I think it's an enormous benefit, man. I mean, you know, um, you know, I think for instance, most fishermen, I think are, 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 are straightforward people. Right. And I mean that with, in a respectful manner, I mean, they, they, you know, they don't, you know, friend, they're just good people, right. They're not littering. They're not doing, you know, I mean, they're just, they respect mother nature and they respect the resources and they care about things. And I think that makes us, and then, and then it gives us all something in common, you know, right. I mean, Joe, I don't know who your relationship with your insurance uh, risk advisor is, but I can tell you, if you got something in common, it's going to be a little bit more of a, for a sure. pleasant conversation than other than you just paying premiums and not having claims. You know right, saying? right, right. And, and being that you are at Lake of the Ozarks, yeah, that's, that, that's gotta help you out. Oh yeah. No, it's, it, it, it's a segue that I've, that I've kind of specialized in. I'm very passionate about the outdoors. I'm very passionate about helping people. And it's just one of those things where both of them cross the crossroads is centered around a fish, 
a yeah. lot of it, you know, or like the Ozarks, you know, I mean, I have a right. lot of clients from, from out of state that come down here and they know how much of an advocate for this lake I am. And, and they want to have their business with me versus somebody who doesn't even know or a call center, you know, something like right. that. So, right, right. and, and, and all of the people that are in my office are like that too. You know, they're either fishermen or they're from the area or mm -hmm. they, you know, they've got a lot of tremendous amount of history and this is just a neat place. So yeah, it, it cross pollinates all over the board, Joe. Cool. And if they and if they don't know going in, when they sit down in their office, they're going to see what's behind you there on the wall. <laughs> I, see, uh, I see several plaques, fishing plaques there. So oh yeah, yeah, great absolutely. conversation starter. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, that's what I. But they'll they, they'll razz me about it too. Yeah, oh, I didn't I didn't expect you to be in the office today. You know, <laughs> I thought you might be fishing. You yeah. know, I'm like, well, you know, you could have your business with somebody who's not successful if you want. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. <laughs> I'm just teasing. That's cool. Well, Marcus, I, I, I know I you've got line for my hard nosed clients. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, and I know I'm I'm sure uh this this hour we've spent together is probably keeping you from tending to some of those clients. Yeah. So I don't want to take up too much of your time, but uh before we leave, where can people follow along with your journey and yeah. reach out to you? Yeah, man. So the, I guess from the social media side of things, I mean, the only thing I'm doing is some Facebook and some Instagram stuff. And, and I, I haven't done very much of that, but I promise you, you see me standing around, you know, and, and you've got a story to tell, or you want me to know who you are, or we can just, just start a general conversation and say, hello, I promise you, I really do care about people. And I really care about this community. And I care about the support that we're all passionate and in love with. So if you see me and say hi, or my office is right here in Osage Beach. Um, right across the street from uh, Wendy's and Taco Bell here in the middle of town in the, the big uh, brick office building there. But um, man, I'm anything I can do for anybody in any way, professionally or personally, I, 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 I would always welcome the opportunity to do that, Joe. Like a good neighbor. <laughs> That's right, baby. Marcus Sikora <laughs> is there. <laughs> Marcus, thanks for being on the show. Hey, Joe, thank you so much. Anything I can do for you guys or Aaron, you let me know, okay? Absolutely. So right now I'm outside of a Walmart and at this very moment, there are 120 Walmart locations through Mid-Missouri, Southern Missouri, and Arkansas that carry Tackle HD products. In particular, our signature High Def Craw, the three inch version, our three and a half inch Nedmite, and the five inch Helgramite. So if you're in Mid-Missouri, Southern Missouri, or Arkansas, check your local Walmart for the Tackle HD end cap displays.